with another episode of My Car Story. And today, in the early automotive history, we have Alan Travis, our historian, and probably the crown jewel. What do we have today? We have a 1913 Type 22 Bugatti Torpedo. And to give you some comprehension of what that is, if you went to the Bugatti Museum in France, their earliest one is 1920, and this one runs so... Let's grab the camera for no further ado. Alan, come right alongside me and let's take a look at the shape of that. So here we are in 1913 and this is a full blown race car. Now as we get closer, I'm gonna show you a few things. Could you grab that light for me? This, we're not gonna show you when we do the interior because that's part of the electric, but notice the body shape. Now, is it all aluminum? The body's all aluminum. Tell me about these knockoffs. These knockoffs, you simply hit it with a, a leather rag and a leather a lead hammer and they spin off. There's 144 splines. So it, it weighs 1,100 pounds. So you only have three or 400 pounds on the front end. You can lift it almost, change it in literally seconds and you're racing, you're ready to go again. That's incredible. We're gonna kind of go side to side on the engine compartment as well. So let's open up the engine how long have you had this one? I've had this one about eight years. I spent 3,500 hours restoring it. Wow. Did so, it run when you first had it? No, it was probably not run for at least 100 years. <laughs> for 100 years, go ahead. What do we have here, all of these wing nuts? Okay, well these wing nuts are for the, for the radiator hose. Notice the radiator has no fan blowing oh, on it. Wow. It's never had a fan in its whole life. It's designed incredibly efficient. No fan, and I live in Arizona. It does have a cent centrifugal water pump that's efficient. Um, and then what this you're looking at here, this is a set of nickel steel headers, cast nickel steel headers. So these are equal length runners uh, before they made header systems like that. So that's neat to have an original one of those. This is how you adjust the exhaust valves. You go inside there, adjust your that. This is your vacuum tank for your fuel. I use it for a gravity feed tank from the rear gas tank. The air pressure builds up the pressure in the gas tank, pushing the gas into that, and I use it for gravity feed for the carburetor. And I see it has a tag on the front, so I want to feature that. That's interesting. And then I see there's a tag down here. Tell me about this tag. That's a DDM Butone uh, racing oil. So it says for racing cars, you want to use their oil. That's what the Vitesse means, it's for speed. So that was just a, an interesting thing, like a, a Valvoline sticker from the 60s. That was a bronze brass sticker from, or patch from the teens. Oh, wow. This is your tack drive, it's directly to the dash straight line from the rear camshaft. It's an overhead cam, overhead valve, all ball bearing camshaft racing engine. So it's a really high tech. Wow. And then this is your oil primer for your oil box. Got it. So we would turn that, take that off and fill this up when we start it because the oil pump is this high and the sump with the oil quantity is down in the bottom. So yeah. before you start your race car, you, you fill this box with oil to make sure that you're guaranteed to have oil. Got it. All right, so we can close this side. Okay. And you race this. I know that. And let's go, let's step back for a moment and just let's take in, come on back with me. Let's take in that. Oh, wow. So what you're looking at is the iconic Bugatti radiator, the horseshoe radiator. You're also looking at the front adjusters for the front brakes. Which are right here. Can you just pull the brakes so I can show what those sure. do? So watch this. You can see, okay, perfect. Great. I'll hit the brakes again. You can see how the ball joint gave it a different angle. Yep. Wow. Everything marked like so. 
All right, we'll straighten those wheels back out, please. Now, are these just normal leaf springs? I don't know if I want to call anything normal on this car. Well, kind of normal leaf springs, and because it has front brakes, the front leaf sets are wrapped because when you put on the brakes, if those leaves would open up, you'd have a non-stable front end. Got it. So those are tightened up with a hemp rope, and then there's, there's a shellac placed on those to keep them in place. So when you put on the brakes, it doesn't pull and do something funny. Right, we have obviously, and that is, if you're asking, is that the original? And the answer is yes. Show me what happens with that radiator cap, please. Okay, the radiator cap, there's no threads in it because threads can get corroded. So to pull the radiator cap off, you pull that up and you lift it off. And what that button does, it, in, it pushes these buttons in and out. Takes the pressure, right. To, to lock it in place. How cool is that? That's amazing. The radiator is original, original honeycomb. This radi radiator is more than 110 years old. It still keeps it cool, even without a fan, and I live in Scottsdale, Arizona. That's amazing. All right, I want to show you these lamps. Now, these lamps are interesting because, go ahead, tell the story. Well, these, these are ones. Blario lamps. Louis Blario had Bugatti race car number one. Louis Blario, to make his income, Besides making his airplanes that he made, and he was the first one to fly across the English Channel in his Blario airplane, he made lamps for high, high-end cars. The interesting thing about these lamps are they're brass and they're electric. So brass, the brass era stopped in about 1913. Everything after that became steel lamps, black painted. But these are brass lamps because it's 1913. Also, the brass lamps from 1912 and earlier were, were carbide, acetylene. But these are in the, in the electric era, so there's original bulbs inside there, and those are the original Mazda bulbs from 1913, and I'm still using those same bulbs today. Wow. And it's not the Mazda that made the, the rotor engine car, it's the electrical company Mazda back then. Well, let's... So there's a little bit more to this story as well. Before you bought the car, you bought these. Yeah, there's only one or two, there's only two 1913s that I know of really in the world of the race car variety. So I had drove one in the Prescott Hill Climb in 1991, but then I found these lamps um, about eight or nine years ago. I bought these lamps and I know they were Bugatti race car lamps. Didn't have a car and didn't even have a chance probably to get a car. But then I found this car, finally, six months later, I bought the car and it didn't have its lamps on it. So I already had the lamps for it, so I naturally had to buy the car. So I, uh, I think my wife said it was a premonition. Naturally, you had to buy the car. <laughs> well, let's show this side of the car as well. Let, let's step back for a moment. Come on back with me, because this side is different than the other side. And as you can see, and we'll show you the horn and all of the, I'll call it brass work on the side there when we do the interior, which is gonna be coming up next. But let's open this side of the uh, engine compartment. That is quite, tell, I'll just stop talking, okay. go ahead. Well, this everything about a Bugatti is from an engineering standpoint a masterpiece and from an artistic standpoint a masterpiece. Some things are a little odd though. This is the oil pump. The oil pump from an engineering standpoint really should be down way below, but he put it up high so you primed it by priming it taking your cap off. Uh, this head, this was the first time he ever really made his own company in 1913 and the last part of 1912. He did the Michelangelo Carol Shelby thing, but it was not done with any other manufacturer. He autographed his his heads. So this is in the casting. This is his signature. No one did that. Um, you had to be pretty assured of yourself that you're going to make a good car that would last, and it has. These are how you adjust your valves. Uh, this is your intake manifold. That's your primer. That's your racing carburetor. Stay there for just a second. I just want to some words on that. Okay. What's that, this linkage here? This that's the choke. Okay. Got it. I see it. Yep. Thank you. And then our distributor. You don't have a distributor, you have a magneto. Okay, got it. So we're gonna play with that. 
I see it. And I'm advancing and retarding the, the magneto. I see that. We have some spare spark plugs. Yep, and these are original spark plugs. And these are take apart spark plugs. So during a race, since it's an overhead valve racing engine with the oil pump right there, with a lot of oil pressure, you might need to uh, change your spark plug. So your mechanician would do that. This is your tank for oil, and this was your primer tank for your overhead valve. And this is not a total loss car, this is a recirculatory car. So you would just use a pill bottle full of oil from this to prime your oil pump. Let me define total loss. Total loss means that the oil would be gone once you use it, versus this actually continues to go around. Is that accurate? Yes, yeah, it recycles it. Very good. Ellen, you know how I know that? From the history of my <laughs> car story. I appreciate you sharing all this with me. It's absolutely fascinating. All right, we will start it outside and we'll show it to you there, but for next we're gonna show you the interior. This time we wanna show you the interior as is. And we'll start with, well, the Bugatti right in your face in the center of that steering wheel. Tell me about this. Well, that's, there's Bugatti designations and, and signs all over the car. So that just happens to be one in the steering column, which is a nice thing to keep looking at when you're driving your 110 year old Bugatti race car. And the steering wheel itself is extremely light. The amount of steering it takes to move this car to steer it is two oh. fingers. You've got everything you need to do because the car is only 12 or 1300 pounds, ultra lightweight. I see the metal rim through the center of that rim. Yeah, you would never normally see a wood steering wheel this thin, but it's got stainless, it's got a high nickel content steel on the inside of the wood, mm -hmm. which makes it stay together really well. So you've got an extremely light touch. And it's also, if you got into a wreck, it's flexible. Oh, that's interesting. So let's take a look at our first gauge over here, which is all red. Okay, right now that's four red flags. That's an idiot gauge. Those four red flags, when you start up the engine, after it starts for four or five seconds, it all rotates this direction. Okay. And then what the next portion of that flag is, is white. So if you look at it and you see it in white, uh, white flags instead of red ones, you can go and give your car gas and you can go on your way. Yeah. But until that red switches to white, you can't go. What's the black switch all the way over next to it? This one right here. Is that a turn signal? That is a, that's a turn signal, yes. Because okay. we raced this in Canada a couple years ago. And then right on top, we have this little button here. Do we know what that's That's for? a kill switch. Kill switch, all right, up center. And then this, is that, that's a speedometer that goes around twice so it'll read a hundred miles an hour and it goes this direction as it goes around okay um, just nice this is how you control your your um, your electrical items if you have some electrical items is this just a, a timer for you well this racing? has no no radiator ornament that tells me my heat. So this is okay. my alarm, so if I ever had too much head Got temperature. It. So Got that it. doesn't so it's, belong it's on a, there. I, I understand it. So it's just a temperature gauge. What do we have right here? This is your light switch. Oh yeah. So you can see, see the lights come on and yep. off. Yep. This is your original tack. So it goes to 3,500 RPM. It's wow. direct drive from the overhead cam, overhead valve, cam shaft right to the engine mm -hmm. and it spins really nicely. It's really neat to be able to look at that, especially when you're driving a race car. Wow. This is it, is it lighted or is it not lit? It's not lit, but okay. you could turn this on and that lights it up. Okay. But it's not really a fun car at night. Got it. Uh, this is your essence, which is your fuel. And it's not a fuel gauge showing you how much gas you have. And it's not a fuel gauge to see how much gas pressure you have. It's how much air pressure you have in the back gas tank. Got it. So on the side of the car, there's an air pump and you pump, I pump this up to about the second mark, which is about- Is that this air pump here? Yes, it is. So it's this, you pump this right here. Yeah, I give it three or four pumps until I get a one or two, you know, a half a bar or so, which is a half a pound or so of air pressure. And that's enough to drive the gasoline from that low tank to the engine for anything other than a real steep mountain. If it was a steep mountain, I might go up to a quarter of the way, but 
all along I'm taking chances on the gas tank because the gas tank is 110 years old. So those seams were soldered together 110 years ago. Got it. What's the gauge right next to it? This shows your condition of your dry cells. So there's dry cells on the, on the side over here, the X-side box. So I, now I have 12 or 13 volts on my dry cells. Okay. Um, we'll show those in a second. That's your horn. That's the horn. So we'll Electric operated. The horn is right there. The horn's right there. Got it. Okay. This is your uh, motor android. And a motor android is basically a altimeter and a barometric pressure gauge. So if you're at a different racetrack than you're normally used to, and it's much higher altitude, you know you need to you know, lean the carburetor out a little bit. You might need to advance the, the timing a little bit. It just gives the driver some information on what the altitude they are at so they know what their relative performance might be. They show how that spins a little bit. And the way you adjust it, so we live at 2,000 foot elevation, so it's accurate, but I, if I was gonna go somewhere and the, it was a real cloudy day, I could change this that right there. Got it. to the altitude that on the yeah. new place if I needed to. Got it. We could shut this light off. Got it. And then this right here. That's your short for your magneto. Okay. That kills your magneto Got by it. shorting it to ground. Got it. Okay. And uh, then right next to the, the, I see a pressure situation. Yep. Go ahead. The, this is an overhead cam, overhead valve racing engine. So the, the oil pump for the motor is four foot higher than the sump. So you don't wait for the oil to get there from the sump. You would go ahead and pull this in and out three or four times and prime your, your overhead cam box so all your lifters have oil before you start. Button right next to it, just on top of it. Yep, that one. That's a choke. You can pull that out and it's a choke. Got it. And then one right next to that. that this is the Bugatti clock. It's accurate. It winds by simply winding it up. And that's the dash light. And then we've got a mirror. The mirror doesn't belong on here. 1913, they didn't really have any rear view mirrors. But I drive this all the time, so I need a mirror. Right. Let's go from the inside here. We've got the linkage here. Tell me about the linkage. The linkage, this is the timing. So I put a piece of tape here. So I like it when I'm normally driving to have the lever at that spot. I can have it more or less, but I know at that point it never pings and I have good low response, low RPM response. Okay, our pedals. And, and this is the choke here. Oh, okay. Another this, choke. This one right there. Yes. Got it. And then, uh, as we, we should do it this way, that one right there. Yeah. And as we learned from some of the other videos, the round pedal, the smooth pedal, is almost always the gas pedal, and it's the same on this one. And almost all of the early European race cars, the gas pedal was in the center, and the other two are clutch and brake. Okay, and then we've got that badge. If you can move just a little, yeah, that one. That badge shows a place that it might have gone a hundred years ago to get its oil changed or get something adjusted. That would be a garage placard. So to encourage the owner to come back to their garage or their their uh, establishment. Yeah, their mercantile for cars. I see one zero. Is it nineteen o two or is it one zero zero two? And then the word Bugatti there. It's 1002, and that's the serial number of the car on here. Okay. And then it's... What's the big bolt for right next to it? That big bolt is the, is the cap for the transmission. It's aluminum it. cap. And you fill it so you have about a quarter inch up from the bottom of the gears. And it's that Bugatti, part, Bugatti name is part of the transmission cover. Uh, this, this whole transmission cover and this whole floor is all basically aluminum because it's a racing car. So almost everything in this car is made to be incredibly lightweight. While we're, while we're on the floor, first of all, we've got our gear mechanism here. What is it, one, one a brake, and what's the inside one? We have a brake and we have a transmission. And inside the car, we have a gate for the transmission. Which one's the brake? The outside? Well, that this one, one here's okay. the transmission. And you can see, you can move it back and forth and hold your camera, and you can see it move inside the gate. Okay, go ahead. So move it back and forth. Oh yeah, I see that. So that's your gates, like what a Rolls Royce would have for gates. Right. And the one further out is the rear brakes. This one. So it, it's kind of an emergency brake, you could call it that. But what it is, if you come into a corner real hot and heavy, you pull the rear brakes and you adjust the, the balance of your, of your rear end. You have one cable that operates the brakes. 
the brakes go through the center of the car, that one cable goes through the center of the car, and both ends of that cable goes to each side of the car. That's called a bronze trunnion. So when you push that, pull that emergency brake, i.e. the handbrake, yeah. you're equalizing the pressure on your rear. And then you have your foot brakes are four-wheel brakes. But you don't use your, your four-wheel brakes un unless you've assured yourself that you've got the back stabilized if you're in a race. I understand. All right. So as I look at the floor, we also have this... Uh, well, first I'm going to go to the far side. There's a button down there. What's the button? That's an exhaust cutout. Okay. So if you want to make a little bit more noise, uh, this this is the bronze trunnion that goes that the cable goes through from the inside from the outside of the car. Right. Interesting. This is a water bottle for the racer. So this water bottle should last a long time. It's copper. Period. Correct. Yep. And it's you can always assure it's clean because it's all lead filled. Wow. That's all nice raw pure lead. And if you want to clean it before you go on a nice long drive, you put diet coke in here slosh it around a little bit yeah. and then pour that Diet Coke out and you've got a nice clean lead <laughs> canteen. The Diet Coke X is a cleaner. To, to put your fresh Diet Coke in for your trip. So now when you have the fresh Diet Coke and you're drinking that, is there possibly a lead that's going into you? Maybe some. <laughs> okay. Right. You probably shouldn't have one of these cars till you're at least 70 years old. <laughs> so you're not taking that many years. At least not drinking from the bottle. Okay. Right. So let's go over to the seat area, which we have some toys on the seat. Obviously a wonderful buttons on the seat, but tell us about what we have here for the driving experience. Well, the first thing is these are the racing goggles from 110 years ago. And these are actually 120 years old. Wow. And the lenses back then were always round, not these funny shapes. Okay. Because they could, they could mathematically figure out what the value was. Okay. And then and for the, rocks, yeah, the side. they had the side thing for the rocks. Got it. Oh yeah, very nice. But then if you're just in a normal in-town ride, you'd have your, your cap on. And in town, you're going 10 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour, then you're out on your spirited road, you turn your cap around again, and you'd have your built-in goggles. So when the guy next to you in the horse is ready to go, you put this on. That's right. You're letting the guy in the horse know you're going for <laughs> this it. This is going for it. Now, I just want to step over here for one second. We talked a little bit about the electric box. You shared that, what was the, uh, I'm getting a great angle on things right there too. Oh, that's good. So this is your battery, and your battery is different than what you think your battery might be. Again, this is 1913. So there's not really a car battery. What's, at the, the, what's the material on the top? Bakelite. Okay. It looks plastic. I know it's not, but... It's, it's kind of the plastic of the day, but it's Bakelite. Okay, and while we've got this here, I just want to show these. Tell me what these badges are. Well, these cars are dangerous. So that's your St. Christopher medal. Okay, nice. And that's for racing cars. You see the racing car oh, on yeah. that. So they would actually do that. Yep. And oh. then what's this one? Our, our Lady of Perpetual a, Motion, or? Uh, that was an automobile club from that same era. Wow. Okay, so here's our batteries. Go ahead, you're sharing. So you're, they're stuffed in there, but you could, they're the, Original batteries. Wow, very cool. And they hold juice. And here is our, since we're in the interior, here is our... That's brake. our, that's our brake lever. So I'll that. push the brakes. Keep your camera on there. Mommy. Okay, I will keep it there. Oh yeah, I see it lo loosen up and tighten. Loosen and tighten, got it. So if you had one tire up, in the, up high and one down low, when you pushed it, that cable would go through the center and equalize the pressure. Got it. And we'll go back to the car. So we're in the back of the Bugatti. We want to take each section by itself, such a special car, and the light is hitting it just right. So you can see we've got the leather license plate. Is the EB Bugatti, is that correct right there on? Yes, that's their designation. That's the same thing the radiator has also. Yeah. There's no uh, lack of uh, making sure you know whose car it is, no, for he, sure. They, he also marked the sides here on the rear suspension. There's even togs in there. Oh, wow. 
Yeah. And just so you could uh, you could have a really wrecked for Bugatti somewhere and <laughs> buy the pieces. You know what it was. Figure it out in your own way. Okay. Got it. All right. So let's start with this piece right here that the light's hitting. Okay, that piece, that's uh, the agent that allow you to go talk to Ito Bugatti to buy a car. He made only 30 cars in 1913. Five to, to 10 are probably type 22s, maybe similar to this. But you had to go through Charles Girat, and he was the Barney Oldfield of Europe. He was the most famous racer, and he was the agent for Bugatti and Delage. So having this brass plate with his address was a pretty amazing thing. I've never seen another one of those besides one of my other cars has the same thing. Um, that's pretty amazing. Let's talk about the wood. What is the wood covering? The wood, everything about a Bugatti is beautiful. So from every angle, aesthetically and lightweight, and from a functional standpoint, a Bugatti has it all. So that is blocking the rear suspension, which is basically inside this tube, and the gas tank, this valence, those beautiful pieces of wood slats to, to block all that, to take your eyes off of the ugly gas tank and the ugly suspension module. Wow. And what do we have? How many, how many <coughs> slots here do we have on the uh, springs? I think we have 13 on each side. And then spring number seven, say, on each side, yeah. weighs within a gram of spring number seven on the other side. Really? So the suspension is completely matched because all the springs, all the pieces of metal slats are exactly the same. Wow. And they're refined, they're cut so perfectly, I mean, they're perfect. It's like the Incas did it. Those are the, and that's a half elliptical. And there's that piece on that side too. Tell me about these lights. The lights are tail lights. They're electric tail lights. This is a 1913 car. 1913, the electric lights were barely coming into play. Oh yeah. Yeah, nice. Lots of, lots of light for that. And then we have a gas filler. Yep, the gas filler. You put your your um, alcohol-free fuel in there or your race fuel and you go on your way. We haven't talked about this spare here, but tell me about this. Well, the spare tire comes off with just undoing this strap and then you put a pin inside of this hole and wind it off. And in this spare wheel, there's 144 splines. Huh. So it's extremely precision. You take off one of the other wheels on the car and you pop this on, you can change a tire maybe in 30 seconds. Wow. And Which, for 1913, nothing was like that. That's crazy, yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. The man is an amazing machine. Anything else on the back end that I missed? No, other than this is when I race it, I raced it at Lime Rock and Sonoma, and I raced it at Watkins Glen. Mm -hmm. They require you to have a pull point, so if you go off the track into the sand pits or into the boulders of the tire wall, they pull you out. So this doesn't belong here, but it gives me sort of a rear bumper and it gives them a point to hook the toe straps to. Got it. All right, we'll move back. So we just got done looking at the back of the car, and I have something amazing to share with you. You know how I like the trunk and treats. This is an original, not a copy, of the actual dealership brochure. Alan, take it away, what do we have here? Okay, this is a dealer brochure, and to give you an idea of the quantity of cars they made in 1913 was about 30 cars, and they had five or six different models. So this might even be Ito Bugatti's signature, it's raised. Yeah. I'm not gonna scrape it to no. see. And what is this? That would be the agent that you would go through to buy your car. Okay. All right, let's There's no it. dealership yet. <clears throat> and this, this catalog is for the 1913, 1914 cars. Okay. So they, weren't, they didn't care about a 1913 model year, a 1914 model year. In 1913, 1914, they kind of grouped them all together. Got it. And then so the, that's the first page of, with a picture shows a Type 22 in a race, which is the same model that we have. 
the same iconic radiator that we have on our car. That's the same one. And that was the first year for the iconic radiator. Right. Okay. In 1912, they made a few cars too, but they had more of a square side radiator. Okay. 1913 to 19 to, to present, they came out with the, the horseshoe radiator. Got it. And then more pictures of basically my chassis in different races. And then these are all specifications of different races that this chassis won. Uh, from hill climbs to all-out speed events to circle events to road course events. Mm. So you're buying a car, the first several pages are it racing. So they didn't mess around with making touring cars and family cars, at least not the first part of the owner's manual. Mine's a Type 22, and there's the specifications for a Type 22. And so all these numbers would be exactly what my car is. There is my car without any fender work whatsoever. That's the bare racing car. Okay. And then there's the chassis with the iconic engine in it and the knockoff wire wheels. So everything in knockoff wire wheels. They didn't have any with wood wheels. So every part of it was a racing engine. So this is the signature mm. on the engine. And this is the exhaust system, the cast nickel header system that ours has and all of the race cars had. This is the super lightweight clutch system it has. This is the transmission without the cover. Um, and this is the engine. The iconic thing about the engine is there's Ietro Bugatti's signature on the engine. And that's just like yours. Just like mine. And only a, a few dozen cars had that. And they didn't have any, they didn't have that afterwards. Have you ever seen another one? We'll flip that over. Never have. We'll flip that to the next page. Have you ever seen another one on any other Bugatti? No, I haven't. There wow. could be some that aren't running somewhere in the world, but none that are running. Okay. And then there's your chassis, including the incredibly tiny machined ball, the rear end that's all aluminum and polished that ours has too. Mm -hmm. And then, then toward the end of the book, this is the other models, um, the other body styles you could have on it more body styles you could have on it. So, and so they, they made a few, but they're all little cars and still high performance cars with the same racing engine in them. And that's a type 23, which meant a longer wheelbase. Okay. So that's a pretty big car. And that's a type 23, which is a really big car. Okay. Uh, really big means another foot longer. And type 23, again, the big chassis, four passenger. Mm -hmm. Type 23, big chassis. And there's another big chassis with limousine body on it. So you, you could have it as a race car or you could have it as a, as a big car. Okay. And those are your prices for the different items, your okay. accessories mm -hmm. that you would order. And I think racing there. Wow. And more specifications. Got it. You can even see like some, flip that last one over. You can see it almost looks like it folds in on top of it. Got it. What do we have right here? This is special. Well, this is, um, I did a video for Jay Leno's Garage. And I had the, Jay asked what color, why is the car in this color? Jay already knows. But anyway, he asked me, because he knew I knew the answer. Um, all the Bugattis, the Ito Bugatti's wife decided all the colors of the Bugattis was, should be the color of her cigarettes. So this nice lady was watching the video in France, and then she sent me this. She said, I know where my grandmother's cigarettes from 1913 belong. Mm -hmm. So she mm -hmm. sent me this Christmas box, which is what the... Queen of England gave to the soldiers in 1914 Christmas. Get out. <laughs> All right, go ahead. And inside That's of this. That's quite the gift. And inside of this are her grandmother's cigarette pack from 1913. What? So that's her grandmother's initials. Oh my god. And inside goodness. her grandmother's cigarette pack is the original cigarettes. And then it's the same color as what we painted the Bugatti, so we got it nice. pretty much right. And even in the cigarette box, since she stopped smoking, 
for you. Cigarettes. The cigarettes are still in there. Unbelievable. That's some trunk and treats. Well, I think the only thing we have left to do is we need to take it for a ride. Oh, good. We're gonna start it for you. I wanna show that gauge that Alan called earlier the idiot gauge.
sideways a little bit yeah, there. Where's legs? Sideways a little bit there. <laughs> 